And welcome back to KTN News Desk. I'm Michael Karanja. Now, two weeks ago, it be exact on the 14th of March, Kenyans were up in a row, especially because of the fuel price increase that went up by about five shillings, especially for super petrol. And just to help us understand what goes into the fuel price calculation, I'm not joined by Joe Nganga, who's the Director General for the Energy Regulatory Commission. Just before this, we start. Obviously, Kenyans have become, become expectant of low fuel prices. What happened over the last one month to see such a huge increase in fuel prices? Thank you, Michael, for having me around. I think uh, the key thing is to appreciate the dynamics of the international market and the local market. Yeah. Uh, the prices uh, bottomed up, uh, international prices, in terms of fine products uh, in, on 10th January of this year. So as we were announcing the increases in uh, uh, 14th of January and February, the international prices were going up. So when we announced the prices for this month, it was actually 62 days from the time the prices started going up. Yeah. So that explains the lag, and also it explains the fact that as we were announcing the prices earlier, they were reducing for both January and February. Yeah. But internationally, as I've explained, they started going up on the 10th of January. And in terms of the pricing, what we look for is a very simple way of uh, pricing the, the product. It's the cost of the product itself, that is a refined uh, uh, product, yeah. plus the additional costs along the supply chain. And what we add there would be the freight and insurance, uh, f because they're imported from the Middle East, and then uh, they come to Mombasa, and then we'll add the local costs. The local costs consist of um, uh, taxes and levies, uh, the supplier's margins, yeah. and the distribution costs. Obviously, when you're looking at that, obviously these things are capped, and that helps more or less in a way of having a fixed price for, for fuel for a month. But just looking at the variables, isn't it? Because the argument has been that the price controls for fuel have run their course and perhaps needs to be changed. So when you look at those uh, fixed elements that are actually going to the pricing of oil, isn't it? Some time to readjust them or make them more flexible so that they some Kenyans can enjoy the full benefit of, uh, of fuel prices when they are low. There was a rationale in terms of um, ensuring that uh, you cap, uh, yeah. for instance, the, the margins for the uh, suppliers. Yeah. And the intention here is to avoid a situation where uh, the, the prices, if they are high, uh, they will benefit a particular stakeholder. So there should be a situation where we avoid the price movement upwards, for instance, being of benefit to some particular stakeholder. So when you cap, you actually restrain the, uh, the movement to the actual cost of the product. And this is where actually the difference comes in when people are looking at the reduction, the expectations. Yeah. If I can take the case, for instance, of August last year, uh, the price of uh, super petrol was 116 shillings. Yeah. When you look at the fixed cost, the total uh, would be the taxes and the duties would be 30 shillings, the supplies margin 11 shillings, and distribution costs through the Kenya pipeline infrastructure for shillings. Yeah. That is 45 shillings. So out of the 116 shillings per liter, you have to remove 45 shillings. So the only component that would change would be 71 shillings per liter. Now when you come to February now, when we had the, the total 84 shillings, yeah. the difference now of the 45 and the 84 would be about that 9. So when you move now from the 71 shillings that was obtaining around August last year, and February this year, the proportion will very much reflect uh, the changes in the international prices. That will be about 44%. Then how come everyone is do doesn't seem comfortable? Because there have been calls. We've had the World Bank uh, weigh in on this matter. COFEC is after the neck of the Energy Regulatory Commission is in as far as uh, price uh, controls on fuel is concerned. And we also have some businesses, especially in manufacturing, that have also voiced their concern about Kenyans not enjoying the full benefit of the low prices that are there currently. I think, Michael, there are some issues that I need to clarify. For instance, in terms of the changes in the cost of production, we did not change uh, the fuel cost charge, which is a key driver yeah. of the cost of uh, power. Now, when you're talking about manufacturing, of course, energy will be a significant component. Yeah. And the fact that we didn't change that essentially means that uh, there shouldn't be a talk about the changes in terms of the cost of production. 
We're talking about only super petrol because even diesel, uh, we only change it by 68 cents. Yeah. So in terms of the commercial activities surrounding the transportation, they basically were flat. Now, when I go back now to the World Bank report, we have had a conversation with them, and um, we work very closely with them. Yeah. So it, it was very easy to be able to find out uh, the base on which uh, they were okay. able to make their comments. And I can assure you that we did send uh, our president team to them. We've taken them, uh, we've taken them through all the process, and we are having subsequent meetings. Because essentially, it comes to the fact that they are relying on the crude oil reduction prices. But and not I have mentioned to an you element that you've brought up is, is plats. Perhaps if you just ex explain plats in 30 seconds. Uh, plats uh, is an index, a kind of marker yeah. that benchmarks the prices for refined products, yeah. as opposed to Brent or WTI, that's West Texas Intermediate, or Maban Crude, that uh, track the movement of crude prices. So in this case, we should be looking at plats. And when we look at the movement of plats, it clearly reflects the movements in the local prices. All right. Joe, I cannot let you go without answering this question. Uh, the oil marketers have been of the opinion that the infrastructure does not allow us to fully utilize what is there. We are not able to store a lot of fuel when the prices of fuel. Uh, the infrastructure around the pipeline might not be sufficient to, you know, and ha hence why we are able to have all those added costs. But when you look at the inf one jetty uh, for floating crude, uh, for, for refined products when they come into the country, so you look at the infrastructure. What's the, uh, yeah, what's the commission doing in terms of getting that right so that for, for some longevity so that we are able to have some buffers? I do agree with you, Michael, that uh, yeah. there could be certain operational efficiency that can be enhanced. Yeah. And as you have rightfully said, one of them would be capacity. Yeah. And also in terms of the risk of having one jetty for the uh, evacuation of the product. These and other things are being handled because we appreciate the fact that perhaps if we had uh, adequate capacity, we would have taken advantage of the low prices. Yeah. And many areas in the world are actually moving in that direction to try as much as possible to buy as much petroleum as you can do in this low price regime. Yeah. So certainly there are issues that uh, we feel can be improved on and we engage the various stakeholders to ensure that we have adequate capacity to be able to take advantage of these situations in the future. All right. Thank you very much, Joe Nganga. That has been Joe Nganga, the Director General of the Energy Regulatory Commission, just shedding some light on what goes into the fuel price calculation following the uproar of uh, two weeks ago where fuel prices went up by at least five shillings.